Our gospel text of today is taken from the last chapter in the gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. There are many beautiful points that we can reflect on in these verses and I will take them in smaller parts. The first is that there are exactly seven disciples at Lake Tiberius and Peter is the leader. There are six others with him. In chapter 20, Jesus has appeared to the disciples twice, once when Thomas was not present in chapter 20 verses 19 to 23 and the second time when Thomas was present in chapter 20 verses 24 to 29. Very clearly in chapter 20 when Jesus appeared to them, he gave them a commission to be witnesses on his behalf. In chapter 21, we should expect that the disciples are witnessing to the Lord. But what do we read? At the beginning of chapter 21, we read that the leader of the group whom Jesus has appointed after he asked him three times whether Peter loves him, the leader of the group is going back to his old trade of fishing. Along with Peter, there are six other disciples and one of the six is Nathaniel. Nathaniel appears only in the Gospel of John, appears twice in the Gospel, once at the beginning and the second time in this scene. When he appears at the beginning of the Gospel, he is portrayed by John as a man who knows his scriptures, as a man who is unafraid to voice his opinion. Because when Philip tells him that Jesus is the Messiah and is from Nazareth, Nathaniel knows very clearly that the scriptures do not say anything about the Messiah coming from Nazareth and Nathaniel vices his opinion to Philip, going even further to ask, can anything good come from Nazareth? Because that is what the scriptures would say, nothing good would really come from Nazareth. Jesus encounters Nathaniel and Jesus regards him as a person in whom there is no guile, a person who is unafraid, who says what is in his heart, a person who does not keep remorse and anger and revenge. This is how Jesus identifies Nathaniel, a person in whom there is no guile. Besides knowing his scripture, Besides being unafraid to voice his opinion, Nathaniel is also open. Because even though he knows his scripture, even though he knows what the scripture says, this experience of Jesus leads him to understand that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. And that is why Nathaniel is now one of the seven, one of the close disciples of Jesus. And Peter, the leader of the group, says, I am going fishing. It is likely the other six would have run their hands through their hair and would say to Peter, Peter, the Lord has given us a commission. Peter, the Lord has told us that we must be witnesses of him to the world. And here you are, I am going fishing. And Peter is still the leader. And he hears what the disciples say. He hears what his six companions say. He hears their suggestions. And even after he hears their suggestions, he says to them, I am going fishing. The other six have their opinion. The other six have their own minds. And yet, because they accept Peter, because they want to be united in the Lord, they say to Peter, we will go with you. They cannot understand it. They cannot comprehend it. And yet, they are willing to let their opinion take background 
and move to what Peter the leader would want to do. One of the maxims by which I live my life is this. At every stage in your life, know where your authority ends. The six disciples knew that their authority ended when they made suggestions. They made suggestions. They were detached from those suggestions. Peter was the leader and Peter would make the decision. Often, we forget when we are in a particular position that we are only suggestion makers and not decision takers. Sometimes in a family, it is the husband who makes the decision. At other times, it is the wife who makes the decision. At other times, it is even the children who make the decision. And at still other times, the parents together make a decision. Every one of us must know, whether in our homes, whether in our places of work, whether in our neighborhoods, whether in our travel, whether on the street, where our authority ends. If we know that, and if we know that at times we are suggestion makers, at other times we are decision takers, then there will be no consternation then there will be no heartburn. Then we will be at peace at every single moment. The six disciples know where their authority ends. And so Peter makes the decision and they say to him, we will go with you. And even as the seven go, some of them expert fishermen, are unable to catch anything. The text says they fished all night and caught nothing. Now the other six could have turned to Peter and said, we told you not to go, but they don't do that. If they had said to Peter, we told you not to go, it would mean that they did not know where their authority ended. But the other six accept responsibility for the failure of this mission and it's not surprising that they failed. Because they were unaware of the presence of the Lord. They did not take the presence of the Lord with them. And that is why they could catch nothing. The second scene is where Jesus is always present. Where Jesus had been present but the disciples were unaware. And even as they are continuing their endeavor. Jesus asks them if they have caught anything and they say no. We have caught nothing. They don't know yet that it is Jesus. They are not aware yet that it is the Lord. And then Jesus makes a request of them to cast the net on the right side. The right side is considered the favorable side, the side of authority, the side of honor. And so they listen to the instruction of the stranger because they do not know it is Jesus. And they cast the net on the right side and they haul in a great catch of fish. It is the beloved disciple who recognizes that it is the Lord and tells Simon Peter that it is the Lord. And Simon Peter, impetuous as often he is, jumps into the water and wants to go toward the Lord. And they haul in the catch. And John mentions the number of fish which were caught. He says 153. The reasons why John gives 153 are many. But those which make most sense are that John was an eyewitness. And so the number is not a round figure about 150, about 170, about 160, but exactly 153. Another explanation about 153 is because at that time, the time of Jesus, there were 153 species of fish. 
which had been identified by the Greek zoologists of that time. So in other words, what John is saying by giving us the number 153, that every kind of fish, every species of fish has place in the net of Jesus. And that this is the reasonable explanation is seen when further John the evangelist says, and the net did not break. What does he mean by the net did not break? He means that there is unity even in diversity. There are different species of fish. There are all kinds of fish and yet they are all welcome into the net of Jesus. And despite being in the net of Jesus, there will be that unity. And that is why I say unity even in diversity. And this is our world. This is our church. This is the body of Christ. It does not matter what dress one wears. It does not matter what language one speaks. It does not matter how one addresses God. What matters is that we come together into the net of Jesus and we come together united even in our diversity. Diversity is good. It is good to be different. If all of us were uniform, if all of us were the same, it would be so boring. What makes life interesting is the fact that we are different. And yet, even though we are different, we can be united. Even though we are different, we can understand the language of love. We can understand the language of a smile. We can understand the language of a good deed. We can understand the language of a positive appreciation. This is what Jesus does. Our endeavors, our efforts, our work without the presence of the Lord is often fruitless. And even though we are not aware, the Lord is constantly standing on the shore of our lives if only we become aware of his presence. And even though like the seven disciples and seven, because seven is the perfect number, even though like the seven disciples, we might cast our net all night and catch nothing. At one stroke, the Lord can make us haul in a great catch of fish. What is required is for us to realize that we are individuals, but not merely individuals. We are individuals, but within a community. The concern of a brother and sister of mine is as real to me as my own. If I live only in my nuclear family and I'm concerned only about the needs of my small nuclear family, I have done nothing more than millions of others. If I have to really be a true disciple of Jesus, then I must reach out in love. When I do that, then I become one of the 153 and I'm concerned about the 152 others as well.